الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى ما بعد قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل إن كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني يحببكم الله ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم والله غفور رحيم صدق الله العظيم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما اللهم افتح علينا حكمتك وانشر علينا رحمتك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما يا رب صل وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم اللهم صل على محمد كلما ذكره الذاكرون وصل على محمد كلما غفل عن ذكره الغافلون Honorable ulama, brothers and sisters listening at home Alhamdulillah through the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala today we've reached the 58th session of doing the seerah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In our last couple of sessions, actually five sessions, we have covered regarding the year of delegation, which happened when Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reached the age of 62 and 63. And the reason I spent about five sessions on this is because this was a year when 90% or more of the Arabian Peninsula had embraced Islam. When the conquest of Makkah al Mukarrama happened, delegations after de- delegations from different tribes around Madinat al Munawwara would enter Madinat al Munawwara. They would sometimes come in groups of four, five, six. They would embrace Islam and they would go back to their tribe and they would invite them to Islam. And this constantly kept on happening this year. To such an extent that scholars have written Ibn Kathir and others have written that up to 65 different delegations arrived in Medina to Munawwara all to embrace Islam. They would come, they would embrace Islam and they would go back to their tribe and they would invite them to Islam and the whole tribe would embrace Islam. And like this, Islam flourished when Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was coming to his end of life. So as I mentioned, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is at the age of 62 and 63. And it is reported that Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knew that this is my last and final year. Although he never knew the exact day when he will pass away, but he knew that my time is coming to an end. Because there are five things which only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. And one of them is when death is going to come. But Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knew beforehand that this is going to be my last year. This is why during this year and the next, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would talk to the sahabas and would actually tell them that make sure you remember this nasiha, make sure uh, you keep good ties, make sure you hold on to the Qur'an. And then he would say that the reason I'm saying this is because maybe I might not see you next year. And this is not only... For Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, signs of death comes to Akabir as well. Those scholars, those Ahlullah, who are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even they receive signs from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that their time is coming to an end. I'll just mention two incidents. You know, yesterday was 8th of September 2021. If we go back two years back, two years, 8th of September 2019, it was a very sad day for the people of England. Very sad day. Why? Because one of the pioneers of Islam who came to England and through him Islam spread it so much in the UK, passed away in Canada. Maulana Yusuf Mutala Sahib, Rahmatullahi Alayhi. So two years ago he passed away, two years and one day in Canada. It is mentioned 
And I have heard this from Imam Qasim who runs Iqra TV. He was mentioning that when Mawla Yusuf Mutala Sahib was alive, I, I actually called Mawla Yusuf Mutala Sahib Rahmatullahi Alayhi to come to make dua for my daughter's engagement in Madinat al Munawwara. Mawla Yusuf Mutala Sahib Rahmatullahi Alayhi accepted my invitation and he said to me, that, Oh, Mawla Qasim, I will meet you at this particular pillar in Madinat al Munawwara. There I will give dua and, uh, for your daughter's. Uh, uh, engagement Imam Qasim says that day came we presented ourselves in Madinat al Munawwara and exactly where he told us we met him there he was there sat down and my son my son in law my daughter's father in law they were all there and Mawla Yusuf Mutala Sab Rahmatullahi Ali made the dua and thereafter Mawla Qasim said, said that I started thinking about my daughter's marriage so I told Mawla Yusuf Mutala Sab Rahmatullahi Alayhi that Mawla Yusuf Mutala Sab, we're thinking of, I'm thinking of, of having this marriage done in December. December 2019. So will you be present? And if you give me some date, then I can fix that date. And inshallah you can perform the nikah. This is Imam Qasim mentioning that Mawla Yusuf Mutala Sab Rahmatullahi Alayhi said to me, the matter nahi hunga. I will not be here. So Imam Qasim thought that maybe he won't be here in this country or he might have another plans. So he said, we can change the date. We can change the date. Just tell me uh, a suitable date. Then my son Mutala said, Rahmatullah Alayhi said, matter nahi hunga. I won't be here. If you want for your daughter to, uh, to get married, then do it in the next couple of months. In the next, so this is May, May 2019. During the couple of months. And then he said, Meto dunya mehi nahiunga. Meto dunya mehi nahiunga. I will not be alive by that time. And 8th of September 2019, in Canada, Mawla Yusuf Mutala Sab Rahmatullahi Ali passed away. So these are signs sometimes given to our Akabir before they pass away. That is coming to an end. Shah Wasiullah Rahmatullahi Alayhi, one of the greatest scholars of Indian subcontinent, a great disciple of Mawlana Ashraf Ali Tanwi Rahmatullahi Alayhi, in his majlis, you know these shuyukh, they give majlis, talks, in his majlis, he would say this poetry. He would say this poetry. Pula kya daloge turbat par meri he would say in his majlis that let alone placing flowers on my grave let alone placing flowers on my grave you will not be able to even put soil on my grave. You will not be able to even bury me. That's what he's trying to say. And what happens? 1964 with his family, Haji Wasiullah Wasiullah Rahmatullahi Ali went for Hajj Safar in ship and on ship he passed away. And they had to lower his body in the oceans. So, Pool bi kya dalog Pool kya dalog Turbat meri Khaak bi tumse na dali jayegi. So as I'm mentioning, so those who are God-fearing, those who are allama, those who are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sometimes they receive signs that time is coming up. So Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as I was mentioning, he received signs that time is coming up. So as I mentioned last week, that delegations are coming one after another. Uh, one of the things which Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would do was when a delegation would come, Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sometimes some of or one person from the delegation would stay behind in Medina al Munawwara. He would stay behind in Medina al Munawwara so that the teachings of Islam could be taught to that person and then he could go back to his tribe and teach Islam to his tribe. Sometimes Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would send sahabas to that tribe. 
So sometimes, sometimes what would happen? A sah- a, a, some, a, someone from that delegation would stay behind and Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would allocate a sahabi and he would teach that person Islam, whatever the teachings of Islam was. And then he would go back to his tribe and teach them Islam. And sometimes what would happen? Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would send his own sahaba, sahabi that you go to this place, you go to this area and you teach them Islam. Now a question arises, now why would Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do this? Could a Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam send some parchments? Quran was written in parchments, although it wasn't in, in a booklet format, in a mushaf. Could he give some parchments that he had take this and learn Islam from parchments? And this is something which I want to talk about today briefly. That is the difference between academic knowledge and Islamic knowledge. You see, academic knowledge you can learn through books. You can learn through books. But Islamic knowledge, Islamic knowledge can only be learned through by heart to heart, heart to heart, heart to heart. That ilm which was given to Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa he taught to his sahaba, then to tabi'in, then to tabi'in, then to the scholars. And then this is, this is the speciality and this is the uniqueness of our religion. This is why once Imam Shafi rahmatullahi alayhi complained to Imam Waqi, shakawtu ila waqi'in su'a hifzi, about his memory. What did Imam Waqi say? فَإِنَّ الْعِلْمَ نُورٌ مِّنْ إِلَهِ The knowledge is light. Knowledge is light. Which goes from heart to heart. So this is one of the... couple of weeks back, I talked regarding quran e Kareem, How quran e Kareem was compiled. I'm not going to mention about a hadith. How, how a hadith were compiled. Because that is very technical. And it needs a lot more time. But I will just briefly touch upon few basic things about hadith. Because... Someone, uh, someone wrote an email that this person has uh, enrolled in an alim class. So maybe those people who are listening and who who are starting to study hadith, inshallah, for them it will be beneficial as well. As well. So in our Islam, every hadith, every hadith has got a chain of narrators. Every hadith has got a chain of narrators. No, you will not find a hadith which doesn't have chain of narrators. That who, who said this hadith to you? Ah, this Ustaz. Who sent this hadith to you? To that Ustaz. This Maulana. This Shaykh. And then that hadith has to go back to Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the field of hadith, this is called Isnad, Sanad. So for every hadith, you will have Matan. Matan is the actual hadith. Matan is the actual hadith. And then you have Isnad. Isnad are the chain of narrators. Who's narrated the hadith from Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? So Matan and Isnad. So for example, I'll give you an example. We all know about Sahih Bukhari. Sahih Bukhari was written by Imam Al-Bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi. And one of the most authentic books after Quran and Kareem is Sahih Al-Bukhari. The last hadith which comes in Sahih Bukhari is Kalimatani habibatani la rahman khafifatani ala lisan thaqilatani fil mizan subhanallahi wa bihamdi subhanallahi al-azim which is famous hadith. Because every time you go to a, a Bukhari graduation the, the last hadith, they will always talk about this last hadith. So this last hadith is called mutton. A hadith is called a mutton. This text, mutton. But then you have chain of narrators. That who's, who's narrated this hadith? Then who's narrated this hadith to him? Then to him. Then to him. Then it has to go back to Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So whichever hadith a person reads, it will have a mutton, so the actual hadith, and it will have chain of narrators. And each and every narrator had to be scrutinized. It wasn't like, I heard this hadith from this uh, shaykh. No. Every muhadith had to be scrutinized. That, was there any defect in this person? If there was any defect, then we will not take hadith from that person. And this is actually a whole subject. Fanna rijal is called fanna rijal. Scrutinizing, scrutinizing each and every narrator, narrator's. When, when were they born? When did they pass away? Did anything happen in their life? Did they lie any time? And, and books have been written on this. So for example, there's Al-Kamal Fi Asma'i Rijal, a book, five volume. Five volume, Yam Maqdisi, Rahmatullahi Allah has written this. Ten volume, just on narrators. Each and every narrator has been scrutinized. 
So I'll give you an example. How scrutiny happens. So when, so in them days, it wasn't like this, that you, you go to a masjid and you, you, you hear a hadith. They would have to travel 50, 60, 100, 200, 300 miles, 700. At the time of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, people came from Spain to learn about Islam, to learn, to take one hadith from Imam Ahmad. And where's Spain and where's Baghdad and Iraq and this area. So when Muhaddith, he came, okay, and he, he was told that in this area, there's this sheikh, he's got one hadith. So he went to him and he said, I've heard that you've got one hadith from Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa Could you mention this hadith to him? So he mentioned the hadith to him. And then later on, he saw that same person. In his hand, he had something. In his hand, he had something. And he was calling an animal. Or he was calling his son. I can't remember. He was calling an animal or calling his son. So this sheikh then went to him and said, uh, you're calling the animal Have you got something in your hand? You know when you, when you call someone okay, You try to bribe them You say that oh, Come here, come here I've got something in my hand I've got something So this person This sheikh said No, no, no I'm just uh, joking I don't have anything in my hand He said Then I won't take hadith from you If you can deceive Your son Then what is there to tell me That you won't deceive Against the words of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is how much scrutiny used to happen in the, in the, for each narrators. And when the narrators were accepted, okay, then only the hadith were accepted. So as I was mentioning, mutton, and you've got the, the chain of narrators. For every hadith, for every hadith you will find this. And this is the uniqueness of our religion. That for every hadith, okay, and every person who has narrated the hadith has been scrutinized. That no one can point a finger. And if there was any defect, then the defect, you know, sometimes we hear that this hadith is da'if, this hadith. I don't want to go into da'if and qabi. Okay? It's not to do with mutton. It's not to do with the text. It's, some, it's, it's to do with the narrators. But I don't want to go into that. So what I want to mention is, every hadith I've got narrators. So for example, myself, I studied at Dewey's Marcus and... Uh, Sheikh Mufti Muslihuddin Sahab Rahmatullahi Alayhi. So I learned Bukhari Sharif from Mufti Muslihuddin Sahab Rahmatullahi Alayhi. He read Bukhari Sharif from Mawlana Fazlur Rahman. Mawlana Fakhruddin, sorry. Mawlana Fakhruddin. Mawlana Fakhruddin Rahmatullahi Alayhi read Sahih al Bukhari from Mufti Mahmud al Hassan. Sheikh al Hind, his name was. Sheikh al Hind Rahmatullahi Alayhi read Bukhari Sharif from Mawlana Qasim Nanuti Rahmatullahi Alayhi. Mawlana Qasim Nanuti Rahmatullahi Alayhi read from Mawlana Abdul Ghani Mujaddidi. Mawlana Abdul Ghani Mujaddidi, he read from Shah Ishaq Dehlwi Rahmatullahi Alayhi. Shah Ishaq Rahmatullahi Alayhi read from Sheikh Abdul Aziz Dehlwi Rahmatullahi Alayhi. Sheikh Abdul Aziz Dehlwi Rahmatullahi Alayhi read from Shah Waliullah Muhaddith Dehlwi. Now Shah Waliullah Muhaddith Dehlwi, he's the one who brought the whole hadith, the whole, we could say the alim course, or the whole, uh, 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 the whole subject of hadith in India. You see in 18th century, 1707, when the Mughal Empire had collapsed, when Aurangzeb passed away, four things happened. I don't know going to history. Four things happened. And in, Islam was going to collapse in, there was no India at that time, it was the subcontinent. Islam was going to collapse at that time, 18th century, after 1700. And this is the time when Shah Walila Muhaddith Dehlwi, okay, he, in that subcontinent, he introduced the whole hadith aspect. So this is why in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, 99%. If you ask for any muhaddith to say their narration, the where did you study from? Where did you study from? They will all meet up at Shah Walila Muhaddith Dehlwi. He's, the, he's like the father. And then from there, you'll go all the way to, for example, we're talking about Sayyid Bukhari. From there, all the way to Imam Bukhari. And then from Imam Bukhari to Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Shah Waliullah Muhaddith al-Halwi, okay, he's like, he's the one who bought the whole hadith in subcontinent. Just like I was just mentioning now, 8th of September, Mawala Yusuf Mutala, Sam Rahmatullahi alayhi passed away. In the Western Hemisphere, who bought the hadith in, in this area, in, in Europe, in America? It was Mawala. Yusuf Mutala Sab Rahmatullahi Alayhi. He's the one who devised the whole Darul Ulum in 1973. Darul Ulum, Bari. So the whole hadith 
and the whole alim caste start in the western hemisphere because of this one person Mawlana Yusuf Mutala Subhanahu wa and we shouldn't forget these people you know we do seerah and the whole purpose of doing seerah is as I keep on mentioning not to learn the chronological dates of Nabi Karim Sallallahu but what lessons can we learn you know Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam let alone sahabas or any sahabi who did a favor on Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam my Nabi would not even forget any non-Muslims who would do a favor on Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he would mention the good traits of a non-Muslim who had done good to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for example, Imam uh, uh, Mut'im. Mut'im. He, he died as a non-Muslim. But Nabi Karim Sassam would remember the good things he did for Muslims. And I keep on mentioning this. That in the time of Badr, he said, that if Mut'im was alive, ثُمَّ كَلَّمَنِي فِيهَا أُولَاءِ النَّتْنَا And if he was to tell me that could you free these captives, I would have freed them because of Mut'im. Bin. So, this is Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam regarding non-Muslims. If anyone, if any non-Muslim have done any favors, we will repay payment. So if any Muslim have done any favors, we shouldn't forget them as well. So two years have passed, we shouldn't forget. We should send uh, uh, Isa al-Sawab on his grave. From here, although he's, he's, living, he's buried in Canada. So he came in England in 1968. 1968 he came in England. And... Within five years, he established in 1973, Darul Umbari. Could you imagine? 1968, he comes to UK. Okay? He becomes the Imam uh, uh, later on, uh, uh, Zakaria Masjid in Bolton. And he started living in Peace Street. He lives in Peace Street and the cemetery where he's passed away is called the Peace Cemetery. And on the Day of Judgment, when, inshallah, we all... May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the tawfiq to enter Jannah. Salam. The first words entering Jannah will be peace as salam. When he came, it is reported that when he came, he found it so hard in England. And he, he, he used to come first in his alim class. So when he came here, he thought, what am I going to do here? So he wrote to his Shaykh, Zakaria rahmatullahi alayhi, that I came here and I wanted to teach hadith books. I want to teach big, big books. But over here, there's nothing. And he wanted to take permission to go back to India so that he could teach, meaning hadith books there. Sheikh Zakaria rahmatullahi alayhi replied, the stay in England. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take work from you. And in 1973, he bought Darul Ulumbari. For how much? 1973 when, mashallah, Salim Chachazia and other people, they'll know what the wages were in 1973. 114,000 pounds. 114,000 pounds in 1973. And what was the deal? That every month you have to pay 5,000 pounds. Every month. This was a deal. He was so parishan that how can I pay 5,000 pounds every month? And one day he saw his father. And his father said, Don't worry. Keep steadfast. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make a way for you. And 1973. Uh, Darul Umbari started in 1981 the first people the first eight students graduated Alhamdulillah from our Batli area as well uh, the first Maulana who graduated he has passed away now Maulana Imran Daji Sab may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enlighten his grave as well he was my teacher one of the first students of Darul Umbari 1981 and after that look at England now Forget look at England, look at America, Europe. So all these Darul Ulum are the barakat of Mawlana Yusuf Mutala, Sayyab Rahmatullahi Alayhi. So these people we should not forget. We should remember them. Whenever we're reading Quran, we should send Isa al sawab reward to them. Because this is such a favor they did upon us. That Alhamdulillah we see Islam flourished everywhere because of the sacrifice of them. It is reported that when he actually bought Darul Umbari, people started taunting him. That, what have you done? If you go to Darul Umbari now, okay, even now, you won't recognize Bari because it's on a road and the, the madrasa is actually right inside. And they would taunt him. That, what have you done? Just give it to us. We will buy it from you. Yes, as I was mentioning, 
Shah Waliullah Muhaddith Delvi. So, so I've just narrated my, my chain from Mufti Muslimuddin Sahib to Shah Waliullah. So majority of those people who live in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, their chain will meet up at Shah Waliullah Muhaddith Delvi. Then from Shah Waliullah Muhaddith Delvi, majority of the people's chain will be the same. So, she, so from, uh, uh, from Shah Waliullah Muhaddith, Sheikh Abu Tahir Al-Kurdi. Then from Sheikh Abu Tahir Al-Kurdi, Imam Al-Qurani. Imam Qurani learned from Sheikh Sayyiduddin Qashani. Sheikh uh, Sayyiduddin Qashani uh, read from Imam Shinnawi. Imam Shinnawi from Imam Ramli. Imam Ramli from Imam Zakaria Al-Ansari. Imam Zakaria Al-Ansari from Hafiz ibn Hajar Al-Asqalani. Hafiz ibn Hajar Al-Asqalani from Abu Ishaq Al-Tannuri. Imam Ishaq Al-Tannuri from Imam Abu Abbas Al-Salihi. Imam Abu Abbas Al-Salihi from Imam Zubaydi. Imam Zubaydi from Imam Sijzi. Imam Sijzi from Imam Bushanji. Imam Bushanji from Imam Sarakhsi. Imam Sarakhsi from Imam Farabi. And he learned it from Imam Bukhari. So from here to Shah Waliullah, then from Shah Waliullah to Imam Bukhari. Then from Imam Bukhari, every hadith, I've got different narrators. So the last hadith, okay, Kalimatani Habibatani Le Rahman Khafifatani Alan Islam Taqila Tani Kimizan, Subhanallah, 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 okay, Imam Bukhari says, who, who, who gave me this hadith? وَبِهِ قَالَ حَدَّثَنَا أَحْمَدُ بْنِ إِشْكَابَ قَالَ حَدَّثَنَا So Imam Ahmad ibn Ishkab, who did he hear from? Muhammad ibn Fudayl, عَنْ عُمَارَةَ بْنِ الْقَاقَى عَنْ أَبِي زُرْعَى عَنْ أَبِي هُرَيْرَةَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَ عَنْ عَنْ أَبُو هُرَيْرَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَ عَنْ says, لا يهد نبي كريم صلى الله عليه وسلم say, كلمتان حبيبتان للرحمن خفيفتان على اللسان ثقيلتان في الميزان سبحان الله العمل سبحان الله العظيم This is chain of hadith and chain of narrators And scholars, so, so from myself, from myself, if I don't count myself as one, if I, if I count my teacher, Mufti Muslihuddin, as one, Mufti Muslihuddin Sahib, to all the way to Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there's 29 narrators. 29. Mufti Muslihuddin first, then Mawla Fakhruddin second, like this, 29. And scholars, scholars, have mentioned that it is barka, it is a barka to have your chain small. Because for example, my, my chain is, I'm number 30. But if you can get a chain which is smaller, then you will receive more blessings. You receive more blessings. So, Sheikh Ahmad Ali Lajpuri, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, who passed away in 2011. He had, he passed away in Leicester. One of the shortest chains. One of the? Shortest chain to Nabiya Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Shaykh Ahmad ibn Rajpuri. He read Sahih al-Bukhari from Imam Abdul Rahman Amrohi. Imam Amrohi rahmatullahi alayhi read from Shaykh Fazlul Rahman. Shaykh Fazlul Rahman read from Shaykh Abdul Aziz. Shaykh Abdul Aziz read from Shab Waliullah Muhaddith al-Dalbi. And then from Shah Waliullah Muhammad, it's the same. So, Mufti Muslimuddin Sahib to Nabiya Karim Sassam is 29. From Sheikh Ahmad Ali Lajpuri to Nabiya Karim Sassam is 26. 26. You miss out three chain of narrators. And you become close to Nabiya Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is why, this is why, when Sheikh Ahmad Ali Lajpuri was alive, People in Medina al Munawwara, people in Makkah al Mukarramah, people in uh, Turkey would call him. So that he could narrate the hadith and they could be the number 27th. So I'm, I'm 30th. How can I be 27th? If I heard a hadith from Sheikh Ahmad Ali Dashpur, I'd become 27th. And scholars would look for an opportunity like this. This is why his son in law, Bashir Shacha. Abid. He, he once told me that when we used to go, because he, he used to be a khadim as well. Then when I used to take him to Turkey and other places, they used to actually respect him so much as if like a king has come. They used to be VIP entourage for Sheikh Ahmad Lajpuri. Why? Because these people understand 
what this means to be close to Nabiya Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now if I am 30th, someone could be 27th or 9th. So this was a brief summary on the transmitters of hadith and uh, the mutton itself. And the last hadith, which I just mentioned, the whole uh, uh, hadith, I just mentioned it, that I heard from my Ustaz Mufti Muslim Udin Sahib, he from Mawlana Fakhruddin, he from Mawlana Mufti Mahmoud Al-Hassan, he from Mawlana Qasim Anwati, he from Mawlana Abdul Ghani, he from Mawlana Abdul uh, he from Shah Ishaq, Shah Ishaq from Mawlana Abdul Aziz, Mawlana Abdul, Abdul Aziz from his father, Shah Waliullah Muhadith Delwi, Shah Waliullah Muhadith Delwi from Imam Abu Tahir Al-Kurdi, Imam Tahir Al-Kurdi from Imam Qurani, Imam Qurani from Sheikh Sayyiduddin Al-Qushashi from Sheikh Qushashi from Imam Shinawi, Imam Shinawi from Imam Ramli, Imam Ramli from Imam Zakaria Al-Ansari, Imam Zakaria Al-Ansari from Hafiz ibn Hajar Al-Asqalani, Hafiz ibn Hajar Al-Asqalani from Abu Ishaq Al-Tanuki, Imam Al-Tanuki from Abu Abbas Al-Salih, Imam Abbas Al-Salih from Imam Zubaydi, Imam Zubaydi from Imam Sijdi, Imam Sijdi from Imam Bushanji, Imam Bushanji from Imam Sarakhsi, Imam Sarakhsi from Imam Farabri, Imam Farabri from Imam Bukhari, Imam Bukhari says, ذا وبه قال حدثنا أحمد بن إشكاب قال حدثنا محمد بن محمد بن فضيل عن عمارة بن القاقاء يا نبي زرعة نبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عن كلمتان حبيبتان إلى الرحمن خفيفتان على اللسان ثقيلتان في الميزان سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان الله العظيم هذا تو كلمة which are very خفيفتان very lightweight on our tongue على اللسان ثقيلتان في الميزان but on ميزان ثقيلتان is very heavy what are those two كلمة سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان الله العظيم it comes in narration the Nabi Karim صلى الله عليه وسلم said that whoever reads سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان الله العظيم hundred times every day then his sins will be forgiven even if it's to the extent of the foam which is on the oceans so this is something which we should be reading. Subhanallah wa bihamdi, subhanallah al-azim. And nowadays many people are complaining because of debt, because of financial problems. Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned when Sahabi came in the presence of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, when Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the world has abandoned me. The world has abandoned me. Give me something to recite. Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, have you, not, have you forgotten the prayers of the angels? and the tasbih of the creation. Because of this, they are receiving sustenance. They are receiving sustenance. Why, have you, why are you not reading them? And the Prophet said, that, what is that? The, the prayers of the angels and the tasbih of the creation. He said, Subhanallah wa bihamdi, Subhanallah al Astaghfirullah. So at the end, he added, Astaghfirullah. So Subhanallah wa bihamdi, Subhanallah al Astaghfirullah. It comes in, and that person came to Nabi Karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam afterwards, and he said to Prophet Oh Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Allah subhanahu wa taala has given me now so much wealth that I cannot take care of it now. So scholars have mentioned that Subhanallah wa bihamdi Subhanallah alaihim astaghfirullah every day in the morning I read hundred times Allah subhanahu wa taala. If there's any financial problems which a person is going through, Allah subhanahu wa taala will remove that. Subhanallah wa bihamdi, Subhanallah al azim Astaghfirullah. And if someone can't even read this hundred times, then every single day, this is the minimum we should be doing, is reading Astaghfirullah every day, hundred times. Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, a hundred times. I know it seems very short, Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, فَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَارًا يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدَرَادًا That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you... That فَقُلْ تُسْتَغْفِرُ That make istighfar. Ask forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by reciting astaghfirullah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give barakah, uh, will help you in your progeny and in your wealth. And He will uh, bring rain down. Just by reciting astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. This is why Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنْ لَزِمَ الْإِسْتِغْفَارُ That whoever... Frequently keeps on reciting Astaghfirullah Ja'ala Allah min kulli diqin makhraja Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Will make a way out From every difficulty for him Wa yirzuqhu min haythu la yahtathib Yahtathib And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Will give him sustenance From areas where he didn't even think of 
This is why it is narrated by Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal was a great sheikh. The whole jurisprudence is based, one of the jurisprudence is based on Imam Ahmad. Imam, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi, Imam Abu Nifani, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. He was once tra- traveling and he came across a masjid and he wanted to stay in that masjid. And he didn't want people to recognize him. So the caretaker, the person who was looking after the masjid, he said that, uh, who are you? And Imam Ahmad didn't uh, make himself acquainted with that person. So he said, you can't stay in this masjid. You have to go outside. So he went outside and he came across a baker. And that baker said, you can stay in my house. I'll let you stay. And he never told him as well that I'm Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. And Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal says that I saw him. Keep on, he kept on reciting Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. So Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal asked him that, have you seen the benefits of Astaghfirullah? That you're constantly reciting Astaghfirullah. He said, yes, I've seen all the benefits and all the du'as I've made have been accepted except for one. That I've been making du'a to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, oh Allah, please make me see Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahmatullahi alayhi. And Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal then said to him that I am Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahmatullahi alayhi. So if, if a person can't, then astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Keep on reading, astaghfirullah. So as I was mentioning, we're going back. So Nabiya Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where were we? So delegations, yeah. Delegations would come and Nabiya Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would either uh, teach someone from the delegation by Islam and then he would go back and teach their tribe. Or sometimes Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would send his own sahabi to that tribe, to that area, that you go to this tribe and teach them about Islam. So when the people of Yemen, when they embrace Islam, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent Mu'az ibn Jabal radiyallahu ta'ala an to Yemen. Mu'az, who was Mu'az ibn Jabal? Mu'az ibn Jabal radiyallahu ta'ala an, when he embraced Islam, he was 18 years old. 18, very young sahabi. And when he is being dispatched now, he's, he's now 28. But he was one of the closest sahabi of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Hazrat Mu'az bin Jabal. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loved him so much. And Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said regarding Mu'az, he was so young, he would say, A'lamuhum bil halal wal haram, that the person who is the most knowledgeable when it comes to halal and haram is Mu'az ibn Jabal. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, on the, on the day of judgment, when the, all the ulamas will gather together, the flag, the leader who will have the flag on that day for the jama'at of the ulama will be in the hands of Mu'az ibn Jabal radiyallahu ta'ala. Very close to Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He, would, he was an imam. So in, 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 in Medina Munawwara, there, was so, there, there wasn't just one masjid. There were a few other masjid. So Mu'az ibn Jabal, his love for Prophet was such that he would stay with Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa for a salah, and then he would go in his own masjid where he was imam and do imamat there. So close to Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Mu'az ibn Jabal. And Mu'az ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala, because of his closeness, because of his closeness, he had the opportunity of asking so many different questions to Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because when you're close, you get the opportunity of asking uh, questions which other people won't ask. This is why it comes uh, regarding as a Musa alayhi salatu wasalam that he was kalimullah he would talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when you're close you're afforded to ask questions which other people won't ask so once Musa alayhi salam asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when I will be entered into Jannah who will be my company who will be my companion in Jannah so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned to Hazrat Musa alayhi salatu wasalam that this particular person this particular person okay and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that person that he will be your companion now Hazrat Musa alayhi salatu wasalam never recognized him and never knew who this person was so he went searching for that person and he saw him he was cutting the meat and he said can I stay with you and he never mentioned why he wanted to stay with him and this person said yes you can stay and then he went to his house and then his mother was there. And uh, this person started feeding his mother food, the meat which he had got. And as it, uh, uh, Prophet Musa could hear something which the mother was uttering at that time. So he asked 
that person. Now what is your mother uttering? And he said that my mother is uttering that may you be the companion of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. May you be the companion of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. The dua of our mothers. Now Shaykh Yusuf Mutala sallam rahmatullahi alayhi who I just mentioned. When he got married in 1968, 1968, 69, 70, he didn't have any children. Sheikh Abdul Rahim Limbada, when he went for Umrah, he met Mawla Yunus John Puri, Rahmatullahi Alayhi. Mawla Yunus John Puri, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, asked that Mawla, obviously he said in a different way, but we have to respect. He said, has he, he's, he's got married, but has he had any children yet? So Sheikh Abdul Rahim mentioned no. He has had any children yet. Mu'ala Yunus John Puri rahmatullahi alayhi said to Shaykh Abdul Rahim Limbada, that go, when you go back to England, tell Mu'ala Yusuf Mutala sahab, that apni walidah said dua karao. Apni walidah said, tell your mother to make dua for you. And in 1970, he had his first daughter, Mu'ala Yusuf Mutala sahab rahmatullahi alayhi. And he named him, after Shaykh Zakaria rahmatullahi alayhi, as a Khadija. Khadija. So the du'as of our mothers, very strong, very strong. I would have mentioned a couple of more stories, but uh, I need to actually go very fast. So this is why it is mentioned, those mothers who are listening at home, that your du'as are so powerful, obviously there's no mothers here, but there'll be some listening at home. So powerful, so powerful, wallah, they're so powerful, that even if a mother makes a du'a in joke or in anger, that even that dua is accepted. Even that dua is accepted. And this is why a lot of times we go outside and we hear people, mothers shouting at their children. And sometimes they say bad things to their children. That dua can be accepted. I would have mentioned an incident that this, this, uh, this, this boy got murdered. This boy got murdered. Real life story in England. Murdered, and the and the daughter stopped talking to his to her mother. You know why? Because the daughter said, "Oh, my mother, our son got murdered because of you." She said, "Why? Because you kept on saying to our son, uh, go outside and die. Go outside and die.'" My grandma once told me that in Lajpur, a little boy passed away. A little boy, he fell in the well, and he passed away. So the mother or the father re- reminded each other that you know why our child passed away? Because you kept on saying Kuwama Mur. Kuwama Mur. Which means oh, die in the well. Die in the well. So even in anger, even in anger, this is why Prophet wasallam mentioned a hadith. These are stories, okay? Which are real life stories. But I'm going to mention a hadith. Nabi Karim wasallam said that there was a person called Juraj. He was an Abid. He was a close, meaning uh, he had so much closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was once reading salah and his mother called him. The Juraj come here. He's in namaz and he thought that my mother's calling me. Let me keep on reading my namaz. Second time, third time. And his mother said that may death not, be, may death not come on you until you see the face of prostitutes. In anger, he just, she just said it. And Prophet said, what happened to Juraj? That some people were talking. Some people were talking about Juraj. And there was this prostitute. And this prostitute said, you're talking so much about Juraj. That he's this, he's this, he's this. I can seduce him. So this lady, he went to seduce Juraj. But Juraj, he was an abid. So he refused. And this lady, she found it so bad that Juraj has not done this act with me that she went and did that bad act with a shepherd and after nine months they had a child and that lady made this rumor in that area that this this child is a child from Juraj and like this the, the dua of the mother got accepted and everyone in that city thought this was true and they broke the, uh, the place where he used to worship and look, look how close Juraj was to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Juraj then said, now why have you done this? They said, because uh, 
And that lady has conceived this child and it was from you. He said, no, that's not from me. Who, who is saying this? He said, bring that child to me. It was newborn. And look how close Juraj was to Allah SWT. He went to that child and he said, am I your father? To that newborn. And he refused. He spoke that child. What I want to say is, how close was Juraj? Like that young child spoke. And this is when the people realized their mistake. And they said to Juraj, oh Juraj, we're so sorry. We'll build that temple. You know the place where he used to worship? Uh, or that one, or whatever we call it. We'll build that with the gold. It was our mistake. So this is why, whatever they say in anger, whatever they say in joke. This is why, once Imam, uh, Sheikh Sudes, Sheikh Sudes was once asked, that from all the people, why do you think you were chosen to, the, to be, the, uh, to be the, uh, uh, the Imam of uh, Kaaba? What's so special about you? There's so many other special people. What's so special about you? What, you know what he mentioned? He mentioned that maybe it was a dua of my mother, because when I was young, I used to mess about so much. And one day I messed about so much, that my mom got so angry at me. But my mom knew that even in anger, whatever dua she will make, get accepted. So she said to me, that may you become the Imam of Kaaba. And I think it was that dua which she once made, that I am the Imam of Kaaba today. So it is very important for our mothers, that even when they get angry, or in joke, they don't utter those words, because your duas are so powerful in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that your duas are accepted. So going back to where was I? Yeah. So uh, Prophet Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. Yeah. So so Nabi Karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Yeah. So Muaz radiyallahu taala an. So Muaz radiyallahu taala an. He's so close to Nabi Karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So he was able to ask questions. So one day in the in the Battle of Tabuk, when they went to Battle of Tabuk, Nabi Karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam's animal and the animal of of Muaz ibn Jabal got together. So they were riding together. So Mu'az radiallahu ta'ala who found this perfect opportunity to ask a question. So he said to Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, anbi'ni an shay'in an yudkhilani al-jannah. The O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell me something by the virtue of which I could enter jannah. So Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, tuqimu salah, the prayer five times salah, and then fasting and zakah. And Prophet mentioned a few things. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, shall I not teach you more? He said, yes. Shall I not teach you about the doors of Jannah? And the Prophet ﷺ said that fasting is a shield. Giving charity removes sins. And Prophet ﷺ mentioned a couple more things. And then, this is what, what I wanted to say. And then Prophet ﷺ said to Mu'az, that, O oh Mu'az, shall I tell you something which is the summary of the whole deen? Summary of the whole deen. The pillar of holy. Shall I tell you what that one thing is? And he said, yes, please. The Prophet didn't just say it. Okay? He didn't just mention it. He took out his tongue. And he went, and he went like this. Ya Mu'az, kuffa hada. Control this. Control this. Control your tongue. If you are able to control your tongue, then this is deen. This is why it's so important that we control our tongue. You know, it's only three inch long, four inch long. I mentioned earlier as well, it's easier to put a brake on a hundred miles per hour car than to put a brake on this three inch tongue. It's connected families and it's broken families. Such a small flesh. He has been used in good ways and he has been used in bad ways. And families, relatives, things have been broken because of the misuse of tongue. This is why I keep on mentioning that the, the, the wound which is done through physical wound, that will heal. But that wound which a person makes through his tongue, it, it doesn't heal. When it penetrates through the heart, when you say something to someone, then it's very hard for that to heal. It may heal after so many years. So many years. 
but it's very hard to hear. This is why it's very important that we control our tongue. Whenever we're talking to someone, we control our tongue. How, how can we control our tongue? It's through the, through the purification of our heart. Because what, what will come out from our tongue? What will come out from our tongue? What, whatever is in our heart. Whatever is in our heart will come. If it's milk, you will spill out milk. If it's water, you will spill out water. Okay? Our heart, whatever is in our heart turns into thoughts. Thoughts turns into words. Then those words turns into action. And then action into habits. And then habits into value. And that's our destiny. So if someone wants to know how to control our tongue, then it needs the purification of our heart. Maybe we, we purify our heart. So that whenever such situation comes, instead of bad water coming out, inshallah, good things will come out. This is why Islam stresses so much on the purification of heart. This is why one of the one of the purpose of sending Nabi Karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam was kama arsalna fiikum rasulan minkum yatlu alaykum ayatina wa yuzakkikum to purify you. What does purification mean? Purification of the heart from all the bad maladies and to bring good maladies. Quran says, you know, uh, Imam Shafi rahmatullahi alayhi would say that in Quran there's only one surah. If, even if that one surah, if, if only one surah was revealed, that surah would have been enough. And what is that surah? Well, Asr. Well, Asr in the Nisan al Fiyakus. Ila ladina amnu wa amnu salihati wa tu asabi haqi wa tu asabi sabr. This surah would have been enough. To show the importance of time, to show the importance of this message, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes one oath, one oath, wal asr, qasam his zamanika. To show the importance of this message, he takes one oath. For the purification of heart, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes nine to eleven oath. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa shamsi wa duhaha wa al-qamar Wow, wow, in Arabic has got many meanings. One meaning is and. Wow, if, if you come across a wow in the Quran, it could mean and. So, ra'itu al-qamara wa sayyara I saw uh, stars, I saw moon, and a car, wa. And wa, wow is also used for qasm. This is a wal asr. Wal asr, that wow is is for qasm, for oath, wal asr. It doesn't mean and asr. Wow is, wal asr means Allah SWT is taking oath, wow. Oath on asr. So, wa shamsi wa duhaha, all these vows are oath. Wa shamsi wa duhaha, wal qamari da talaha, wal nahari da jallaha, wal layli da yakshaha, wal samai wa ma banaha, wal ardi wa ma tahaha, wa nafsi wa ma sawaha, fa alhamaha fujuraha wa taqwaha. Qad, after taking 9 to 11 oaths, he says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا Verily, that person is successful. قَدْ زَكَّاهَا Who has purified his heart. After taking nine to eleven oaths, he says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا Verily, that person is successful. Who has purified his heart. Once our heart is purified, then whatever will come out will be good. This is why it is very important that we stay in the company of ulama, we stay in the company of mashayikh. Why? So that the purification of our heart comes into effect. And once purification comes into effect, then inshallah, whatever will come out from this body will be good. So it's very important that we take time out. Jealousy, hasad, kina, bugs, adawa, these are all bad traits of heart which needs to be taken out. And good traits need to be brought in. So what did Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said? Kuffahada. Ya Mu'az, kuffahada. Control your tongue. This is the summary. This is the pillar of deen. So this was Mu'az radiallahu ta'ala. Not only close to Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, his closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was such that in the time of Umar radiallahu ta'ala there was a war between the Romans. The Sahabas had to fight the Romans. So, uh, uh, Khalid bin Walid okay, was there. Uh, Maysara was there. Mu'az ibn Jabal was there. This, this fight was such a fierce fight. The Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala would say that if on the day of judgment, if my Allah says, what have you bought? In a simple 
they say this. That you know, I don't, I don't have anything. But if on, like Haji Imdad al Muhajir in Makkah, he would say, okay, one of the greatest scholars of subcontinent, Haji uh, Imdad he would say, that if on the day of judgment, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells me, that, oh Haji Sahib, what have you bought? Have you got anything by which I can forgive you? Then I would bring Mufti Rashid Ahmad, uh, uh, Mufti Rashid Gangohi rahmatullahi alayhi wa sallam, Qasim Nanu Dwi. That Allah, I bought these two. So Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala would say, that I don't, if Allah asked me, that what, what have you bought? Then I would bring that one night, that when we were fighting the Romans, before the fight happened, that night, it rained so much, so much, and the coldness of Sham, I didn't have anything to cover, to actually uh, cover myself from the rain. The only thing I had was my shield. And all night, I covered myself with that shield. Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, so, Mu'az ibn Jabal was in that fight. So the next day the fight happened. So, I mentioned regarding Badr, Uhud. Whenever the, a battle would happen, okay, before the battle would happen, they would bring one person, they, they would be Mubarazat, one, one to one. So, the next day, they said, bring one person from your army. So, Mu'az ibn Jabal went. He's on a horse. And just then, it started raining rain. And Mu'az ibn al says, it started raining so much that I couldn't even run with, on my horse because of the muddiness. So I came out. I, I came down. And it became even harder for me to walk. And that Roman was there, coming, charging at me. And I thought, that's it. I can't move. I can't go anywhere. This person is going to charge at me. Just then, just then, I read, Ya ghiyath al-mustaghithin Ya ghiyath al-mustaghithin I read these words And this person came And he killed that Roman And this person came up to me And Mu'az ibn Jabal said Who are you? He said I am Tulayha You know in the time of Nabiya Karim Two people prophesied Two people claimed prophethood One was Aswad and one was Musaylima After that After Nabiya Karim passed away There were other people who claimed prophethood as well. Tuleha was one of them. So Mu'az ibn Jabal said, Tuleha, meaning you're the one who claimed prophethood and you've come to help me? He said, yes. He said, when you said, Ya Ghiyath al Mustaghithin, okay, if something happened to me that I need to help you and I couldn't stay where I was and that's why I came and I've killed him. So Mu'az ibn Jabal then said, that accept Islam. Allah SWT will forgive your sins. He said, but in your, in your rank, there's Khalid bin Walid. I can't face him. He will kill me. And Khalid bin Walid was really strong. He said, no, our, our army is not, he's not the leader of the army. Maisara is the leader of the army. Of the army. He said, okay. So Tuleha went to Maisara. And Maisara uh, uh, made him embrace Islam. So Maisara said, go to Umar radiallahu ta'ala and tell Umar that you've embraced Islam. So he went back. It is reported that Umar radiallahu ta'ala was in Makkah. Now he didn't want to show his face to Leha. So he said to Umar I have embraced Islam. So Umar said, who are you? So then he removed his helmet. And then he said to Leha. He said, to Leha, you? You will not be forgiven. He said to Leha, said, why? Why will I not be forgiven? You are the one who killed two Badri Sahabi. Ukasha, radiallahu ta'ala, and Hazrat uh, Samit, I think. You know Badri Sahabi? They, I keep on mentioning Badri Sahabi. Allahu Akbar. This is why it is mentioned. If anyone that was to be accepted, read the names of Badri Sahabas. Your duas will be accepted. Okasha and Samit. Then Tuleha said a few things. And it made Hazrat Umar radiallahu smile and said, Okay then, Allah smile will forgive you. And Tuleha embraced Islam. So what I want to mention from here was this is how close Mu'az ibn Jabal was to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How close was he to Nabiya Karim sallallahu alayhi wa he was so close, he was so close that once Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam approached Mu'az and he said to Mu'az radiallahu ta'ala an, and he told Mu'az radiallahu ta'ala an, that O oh, Mu'az, wallahi inni lu uhibbuk that wallah, I love you you know these words sahabas would cherish to hear so, sahabas would love Prophet sallallahu okay they, they, they would give their entire life for Nabiya Karim. 
This is why one of the, the, the days of Eid in Medina Munawwara was when a Sahabi asked the owner Nabiya Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we are a bit sad. Because in, in Jannah, we don't know where you'll be. What stage in Jannah and what level of Jannah you'll be. And we don't know where we will be. So how can, how, how can we be next to you in Jannah? Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Al-mar'u ma'a man ahab. That a person will be with those people who they love. And when Nabi Karim Sassam said this hadith to the Sahabas, it was a day of Eid for them. Because they loved Prophet Sassam so much. So by this they knew they'll be next to Nabi Karim Sassam. But one is the Sahabas being close to Nabi Karim Sassam. And one is Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam being close to the Sahabi. He said to Mu'az, O oh Mu'az, inni lu'ahibbuk. Wallahi, inni lu'ahibbuk. And he said this three times to Mu'az radiallahu. That Wallah, I love you, O oh Mu'az. Wallah, I love you, O oh Mu'az. Wallah, I love you, O oh Mu'az. And then he took his hand. And then he said to Mu'az, O oh Mu'az radiallahu ta'ala. After every salah, after every salah, just read this dua. Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. Wallah, give me the, the ability to remember you. Wa shukrik and ability to do your shukr. You know, the life of Prophet Sallallahu was all about thanking Allah SWT. Wallah. If someone wants to tell me that, what have you learned from the life of Prophet it was It was about thanking Allah SWT. Every... Every opportunity, Nabi Karim said, would thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, I just mentioned one, because I need to now move on. You know, Nabi Karim says, this is why after every dua you will hear, Alhamdulillah, 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 thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when you come out of toilet, okay, what do you read? Ghufranak, Alhamdulillah. Okay, why doesn't the dua start from Alhamdulillah and why from Ghufranak? Scholars have mentioned many different reasons. One reason is that because Prophet Sassam, he was always engaged in zikr. In toilet, obviously, you can't do zikr. So when he would come out, he would ask forgiveness. That's one. But look at the other, other view. Allahu Akbar. He would come out of the toilet and coming and digestion is one of the greatest ni'mat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallah. Only those people will know who have to go for kidney analysis and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure all of them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? One of the greatest ni'mat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He would say, Ghufranak, Oh Allah, this is such a ni'mah. Even if I thank you, I don't think I'll be able to thank you to that level. Ghufranak, please forgive me. Alhamdulillah, ladhi hayya. Alhamdulillah, ladhi adhaba'an ladha wa'afani. Ghufranak. I, I, I want to thank you, but I know that that level of thankness is not going to come. Ghufra, please forgive me. Alhamdulillah, This is the level of shukr Prophet Sassam had for Allah. So what we want to mention, this is how close Mu'az was with Prophet Sassam. This is how Mu'az was with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But look at Mu'az. You know, every night he would go to sleep. You know, the du'as which he would read. اللهم غارت النجوم وهدأت العيوم أنت الحي القيوم فراري من النار بطيء و... وطلب الجنة ضعيف وليس عندي إلا شيء إلا أني أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت وحدك لا شريك لك وأن محمد عبدك ورسولك He would say this This is how close Mu'az is Night time would say Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The sun has set the, uh, the eyes are coming to go to sleep until Hayyul Qayyum, you are everlasting sustainer. I don't have anything, Wallah. I don't have anything. Ferrari min nar going away from Jahannam is hard for me. Watalab al Jannah da'if. The acquiring of, of, of Jannah. I don't have that much power. The only, Walaysa Indi, I don't have anything, Wallah. Illa, except. That I say, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa anna muhammadan abduk wa rasuluk. That's the only thing I have, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. So Mu'az radiallahu, it's such close sahabi. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says to Mu'az, oh Mu'az, you need to go to Yemen. Okay, so in, in, usually Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would, whenever he would depart someone, he would, this is a sunnah, this is 
a, a prophetic manner that whenever someone is leaving, okay, even some relative have come to house, don't from the sitting room say assalamu alaikum and let them go. No, go up to their car. Okay, this is one of the manners from Nabiya Karim Sassam. Nabiya Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is going to leave Mu'az, okay? So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from Mu'az, what does he do? He doesn't go outside the masjid, then inshallah, you go. Mu'az radiyallahu ta'ala an, he accompanies Mu'az radiyallahu ta'ala until the border of Medina to Munawwara. Mu'az radiyallahu ta'ala and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are walking. And Nabiya Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is giving him advice. That when you go to Yemen, these are Ahl Kitab people. Make sure you are not very harsh on them. When they embrace Islam, make sure you uh, call them towards Salah first. First thing, make sure when they embrace Islam, without, before anything, to qimu Salah. This is why Salah is so important. And then other things. Okay? Now this is Mu'az, radiallahu, he's been in the presence of Nabi Akram for 10 years. But even now, Nabi Akram is giving him advice. You know, what can we learn from this? That when we're going with our children to drop them up at school or anywhere okay don't think I've taught them everything no give them advice Prophet is giving Mu'az special advice when you go to Yemen so similarly when we're going with our children anywhere and dropping them off to school whilst we're going give them one advice look you're going to school make sure you don't lie make sure you don't lie one advice so Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and Mu'az are going and Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa is giving him all the different advice how he should be uh, uh, liaising with people in Yemen. And then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says to Mu'az, Oh Mu'az, when you will go there, how will, uh, and you need to give a ruling. How will you give a ruling? So Mu'az said, I will look in the Quran. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Okay. Then, كَيْفَ تَقْضِي After that, if you don't find something in the Quran, if you don't find an answer in the Quran, how will you judge people? He said, I will look in the Sunnah, in your life. What if you don't find a ruling in Quran and in Sunnah? Then what will you do? Because you'll be in Yemen. He said, I will do ijtihad. I will deduce. I will deduce masla. I will deduce ruling. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi became so happy at this answer that he actually patted Mu'az radiallahu ta'ala an. That's such a good answer Mu'az radiallahu ta'ala an gave. And then they've reached the end now, okay? And now Nabiya Karim Sassam need to let Mu'az radiallahu ta'ala an go. So Nabi so Mu'az radiallahu ta'ala who gets up on his amal, on his animal. And then Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says to Mu'az, Allahu Akbar. Asa Allah talqani ba'd aami hadha. O Mu'az, after this year, you will not see me. You will not see me, O Mu'az, after this year. So Mu'az man. Meaning, what does this mean? I will not see you after this year. لَعَلَّكَ أَن تَمُرَّ بِمَسْجِدِ لَعَلَّكَ أَن تَمُرَّ بِمَسْجِدِ هَذَا بَقَبْرِهِ O Mu'az, when you will come back from Yemen, I will not be alive. You will go past the masjid and you will see my qabr. I will not be alive. Meaning, O Mu'az, this is our last. This conversation which we are having is our last. You are looking at me, this is the last time. After this, I am not going to be. You will not be able to see me at all. Mu'az radiallahu ta'ala cried so much. Cried so much. That in some duration he cried like a child. You know, you know, and Prophet said a lot, you know, you know sometimes you go for taziyat and mashallah, a person is strong and he looks at the person, okay? And because the other person is crying, you start crying as well. Okay, it comes that Nabi Karim Sassam looked at Mu'az crying so much that فَأَقْبَلَ بِوَجْهِهِ نَحْوَ الْمَدِينَةِ The Prophet Sassam started crying as well. And he changed his face and he started, look, started facing towards Medina al Munawwara. And Prophet Sassam started crying as well. And then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam looked back to Mu'az and said, Oh Mu'az, don't cry. Don't cry. إِنَّ أَوْلَى النَّاسِ bi." المتقون حيث ما كان that those people will be the closest to me who are who have taqwa who are God fearing have this taqwa in you you'll be closest to me and then with this advice Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told Mu'az go 
could imagine what Mu'az radiallahu ta'ala must have gone through. That this is the last time I'm going to see the face of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because for Sahabas, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was everything. This is why when Nabi Kareem sallam passed away, it is narrated that some of the Sahabas started making dua. That, well, Allah, we don't need these eyes. These eyes were there to see the blessed face of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa the likes of Bilal radiallahu ta'ala an, went and started living in Sham when Prophet left. And here Mu'az radiallahu ta'ala an, is being told that لَعَلَّكَ أَنْ تَمُرَّ بِمَسْجِدِ لَعَلَّكَ أَنْ تَمُرَّ بِمَسْجِدِ هَذَا وَقَبْرِ The next time you will come back from Yemen you will pass this masjid Masjid al-Nabawi and my qabr will be there. I won't be there. And Mu'az radiallahu ta'ala an, left. The whole journey he cried. And this is how Deen reached to us. Through sacrifice of the Sahabas. The cream of Medina, Mu'az ibn al He could have made him stay in Medina to Munawwara. But because this Deen had to reach the four corners of the world. Nabi Akarim could have sent some low-key Sahabi. You go, I want to keep Mu'az ibn al with me in Medina. I want to keep top Sahabas with me. But for the propagation of deen Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made this much sacrifice they sent people like Mu'az radiyallahu ta'ala to Yemen and history bears witness that when Mu'az radiyallahu ta'ala who came back Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had left this world and his qabr was there and this is how deen has reached to us with so much sacrifice in the time of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and after that, and what's been told to us, that we don't need to make that much sacrifice. Two times I've said it in today's session, that the basis of Islam is five times salah. The basis of Islam, and to qimus salah, five times salah. And we are falling behind the first commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, salah. The first thing to be questioned on the Day of Judgment would be Salah. And we are failing in our first question. I mentioned this before as well. That if I was to ask someone here, that take this 10 pounds and go to that pharmacy and get me this medicine. And this person goes. And he comes back. What will be my first question to him? And he starts saying, Molin, I went there and uh, I saw... I said, no, look. You saw this, you saw that. I don't need to know all that. No, but I, I saw this. No, no, I don't, I don't want to know all this. What you saw there, what you saw here. Answer this question. I gave you 10 pounds. Did you get my medicine? Answer that. That's it. If he says no to me, that I didn't. I, I was too busy. I will say, now forget everything else. Forget everything else. I told you one job, one task to do. You could even do that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, on the day of judgment, the first thing I will ask is about namaz. Is about salah. If your salah is okay, then after that, all your questioning will be easy. But if a person messes up in that first question of salah, so this is before the five question, the main question. Then every other junction in the qiyamah will become hard. So it is very important that we perform our salah and we read our salah five times. You know, this is so simple. So as I was saying, as a Mu'az radiallahu ta'ala an, and one thing which I forgot to mention, is Mu'az radiallahu ta'ala an, he said, that on that day, on that day, he gave me many advice. Whilst we were going, some scholars have mentioned it was three miles, some, some, some scholars mentioned seven miles. Okay? The Prophet accompanied him. And all different advice. And as I mentioned before, we should take this opportunity as well to give advice to our children, to other people as well. Now, Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani, from him, the whole Qadri uh, Tariqa is there. Qadri Tariqa. From Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani, one of the greatest scholars. When he was young, he said that once I was going to Madrasa, and my mom gave me a few Ashrafiya coin, and she sold it, and she said to me, I take this, but never ever lie. Never ever lie. And they were going, and a caravan stopped them. And Shaykh Abdul Qadir was a small boy. So they started searching Shaykh Abdul Qadir and they couldn't find anything. 
because his mother had put that Ashrafiya coin in a place where they couldn't find. So then the robber said, have you got anything? We've searched you, we can't find it. Have you got anything? He said, yes. And he took out the Ashrafiya coin and he showed him the pocket. So they said, if you wanted, you could have lied. Uh, we never found that money anyway in the first place. He said, the nasiha, the advice which my mother gave is far more superior. The advice which my mother gave is far more superior than these few coins. That's why it's very important that we give advice. And we remember the advice. You know, I mentioned earlier regarding Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. Alayhi. Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal alayhi, for two years he was in he was put in prison for two years. Every day he was given 34 lashes. Why? Because the ruler at that time, Mu'tasim, he made the rule that whoever believes Quran is not a creation. Quran is not a creation. Whoever believes Quran as a creation, as not a creation, Quran as not a creation, they were imprisoned in the time of Mu'tasim. It is our belief that Quran is not a creation because Quran is the words of Allah SWT. So how can the words of Allah SWT be a creation? Do you understand? It's kalamullah. Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal said to that ruler, Quran is not a creation of Allah SWT. So the ruler at that time, okay, in front of everyone, okay, stripped Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal and punished Imam Ahmad in front of everyone. And Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal fell on the floor. And, and the only reason they stopped whipping Imam Ahmad is because they thought he was going to die. And they gave him water and Imam Ahmad ibn Ahmad said, I'm fasting, I don't want water. Every day he was lashed 34 times for two years. Someone asked him later on, that even in jail someone asked him, that you know you're being whipped 34 times every single day. You are allowed to say words which are against Islam. Because in this situation where death is going to come, you are allowed to say uh, s- such things. He said, no, I am not going to say such things. So someone once asked him afterwards, that where did you get all that courage from? For two years you took all this. Way. He said, one advice I was given. That one advice was enough for me to take all them whip, all them lashes until now. What was that advice? He said, when, when, when I was, once I was in prison, a person by the name of Abu Haytham, he, was, he said, he came to me in prison and he said to me, I have been whipped 18,000 times. I have been whipped 18,000 times. But I have been whipped 18,000 times because of something which I had done in this world. I am punished because of something which I did in this world. I have been whipped 18,000. Oh Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal, you are being whipped as well. But you are being whipped because of something to do with the Akhirah. So never succumb. Stay steadfast. If I can do it, then you can do it. Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal says, that one advice, that one advice from this person kept me going all the way until then. So we don't know. Sometimes we might give someone advice. Someone has come to masjid. We've never seen him. We give him advice. And that one advice could change his life. We don't even know. So one last thing which I wanted to mention. Imam Mu'az radiallahu ta'ala says, and this is the crux of seerah. Why we're doing seerah. Mu'az radiallahu ta'ala says, the last advice, the last advice which Nabi Akram gave me before he left me, was Ya Mu'az, Ahsin khuluqaka lil nas. Ya Mu'az, Ahsin khuluqaka lil nas. O oh, Mu'az, have good characters with people. Ahsin khuluqaka lil nas. Have good character with people. When you are with raising people, have good character. And this is the last advice which I heard from Nabi Akram And this is the crux of us doing seerah. That we learn the characteristics from the life of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so that our character could become like the characters of Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because Allah SWT says in the Holy Quran لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا that in the life of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam there's the best example for you so take it, take lessons and this is the whole reason why we do seerah so that we take from every point in the life of Prophet Sallallahu what can we learn from this so alhamdulillah, few advice, few things we've learned from the life of Mu'az radiallahu ta'ala and after Mu'az radiallahu ta'ala and as I mentioned, after such sacrifice, this deen has come and as I started before, those people who have passed away, especially Hafiz Sahib 
rahmatullahi alayhi, mana yusum mutala sab rahmatullahi alayhi. Let's not forget them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower his mercy on the grave and enlighten the grave. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whoever has passed away, we mentioned regarding Sheikh Ahmad al Ajpuri as well, and others, may Allah and my Ustaz Mufti Muslim Din Sab, and all those who have passed away through their transmitting of hadith, the hadith has come to us through their sacrifice. Islam has come to us. Hadith has come to us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enlighten their grave and give them the highest abode in Jannah. And whoever is listening here and at home, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to act upon the life of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and may he remove any difficulties which we are going through. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Subhanakallah wa bihamdi. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa tubu ilayka. <clears throat> Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Ashadu Allah